welcome back to another episode of Learn Wine, Love Wine. Today, I should give a shout out to Andrea Schipelbaum, who has uh, sent in a message and asked me to talk about Amarone. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, Amarone is not a cheap wine, so this was an interesting one to find in the supermarkets as such, but it's great to talk about. So I'll be talking about Amarone versus Val Policella. Okay, so uh, let's just talk about what Valpolicella is. Valpolicella is the region in Italy. Uh, it's in the Veneto region, very close to Lake Garda, if anyone wants a magnificent holiday. Okay, um, in Valpolicella, they, there's a whole selection of indigenous grapes. So this is where it gets confusing. When you order a Valpolicella, that's not the grape variety. If you have to remember one grape variety, it's Cordovina. Corvina is um, generally quite sour cherries, will always give you kind of more red fruits, maybe some cranberries and raspberries, but it's always blended. So Corvina is the one to remember, but Corvina, Corvinone, Rondinella, <laughs> and also not so much these days, but Molinara. Okay, so they are generally the great varieties. There's a few more, but we'll stop there, of Valpolicella. Now, in the region of Valpolicella, you have four styles we'll touch on. Valpolicella standard, which is a dry wine, and you can have it either simply Valpolicella, which is going to be very light, very much like a Beaujolais, you know, the, the Gamay grape, which is just red fruits and soft and juicy. That's what a Valpolicella is. If you get Valpolicella Classico, you're looking at the original zone, and this is the same for Chianti or some of the other regions. As wine production expanded, they went further out than what the area was known for best soils, best styles, best, you know, best quality of grapes. So when you see if you can get a Valpolicella Classico, you're going to get a similar fresh, light, juicy style, but with a bit more concentration and better quality fruit. And if you see Valpolicella uh, Classico Superiore, it means at least a year of ageing, which doesn't necessarily tell you anything, but they'll probably put it in some oak. If you're going to age a wine for at least a year and hold it back, you want it to be good, good fruit that can last a bit longer. So you're going to have a bit more intensity and a bit more flavour. So they are your still dry wines. Then on the other spectrum, you have Amarone, which gets very exciting. There's actually Amarone and Recciotto. Recciotto is a sweet wine and they are both made exactly the same way effectively. So it's about taking the grapes and then drying them on straw mats or kind of bamboo racks. Now the idea of that, they leave them for about three to four months on these racks. If you leave grapes to dry, they're gonna shrivel like raisins that's already given you an idea of a flavor in the wine um, and you're losing the moisture the water disappears and the sugar intensifies you're going to lose about 35 to 45 percent of the juice that could have been made into say a Valpolicella wine what that means is by concentrating the flavors, you're gonna get more alcohol when you ferment down to dryness, but you're gonna get much more kind of raisiny, dried fruit, chocolatey, really strong flavors. So once they have concentrated these grapes, they can either ferment to dryness and voila, we have Amarone, or if they leave some sugar in there, you have the Recciotto, which is a dessert wine, but we're not gonna talk about that today. So Amarone is obviously going to be much, much more expensive than a Valpolicella. You've lost up to 45% of your potential revenue. You've had to sit around waiting for up to four months for those grapes to even get to a position to ferment. And also because you've got more sugar and you've got less moisture, less water in the grape, actually the fermentation process takes much longer. Uh, fermentation generally takes seven days, yeah, maybe 10 days. This is, you're looking at about 30, 40 days. And during that time, the grapes can go moldy, the fermentation can get stuck and not wanna finish off. And you have a million problems and a million things you need to pay attention to. And of course, labor intensive work means more money. But I have to say, Amarone is one of my favorite wines because it is absolutely delicious. So it is worth it. Now, Amarone costs a lot of money. Um, 
what you can do as a halfway house is the fourth style, which is called repasso, uh, Val Policella repasso. Um, and basically, repasso means repast. So what you're doing, you're taking the pomace, or they sometimes call it mark. What it basically means is just the skins. Once you have pressed the juice out of the grape, you're left with just the skins. They take those skins and they put them with fresh nice juicy Valpolicella grapes, the Corvina, the Corvinoni, that is fermenting. And because that mark has been entered into the into the tank whilst it's fermenting, you're going to get more tannin, you're going to get more flavour, more colour extraction, all those pony fellas, fennels. So all those kind of flavours of Amarone, the, the dried raisins, the chocolate, the spiciness, a little bit of that is going to go into the Valpolicella wine. So if you see something labelled Valpolicella Repasso, it's a baby Amarone, a little bit more affordable and not necessarily a bad thing because Amarone is so strong in flavour. Sometimes it's a little harder even to pair because you've obviously got to find richer food. This way it's a it's a halfway house. Okay so that gives you a little bit of an idea of what Valpolicella is which is the region and will be a fresher wine, to Amarone, which is dried grapes and those dried concentrated flavours. Uh, that is the pasito method or pasamento in Spanish. Um, and then the repaso method, uh, which is a halfway house. So today, um, I don't think you're going to find, it's very unusual to find Amarone in the typical uh, supermarkets, but Majestic being, you know, all over the country, I hope you can all get to a Majestic. Uh, they certainly have slightly more interesting wines. Um, so I found an Amarone de la Val Policella. This is by Catina Negar. Um, I've looked them up. They've, they've got about 80 years of history. They are a cooperative. Um, they have a specific uh, brand branch called Domini Veneti, which is actually for really premium wines. And there's a, if you're looking for Italian wine, there's like a food and wine magazine called Gambero Rosso, translates as, I think, red, red prawn. And they have a wine marking system. Any wine that is considered extraordinary through blind tasting gets tre bicchieris, three cups three coppers, three glasses. Um, so this is their marking system. And many of their wines in their most premium section do have tres bicchieri. So it gives you an idea that even as a co cooperative, uh, that they are looking out for making fantastic wines. Now, this cost me 19.99 from Majestic. If you buy the case of six, any six, they'll give you a better price. And that was 19.99. What that tells me is one, this is not going to be a super crazy intense Amarone. You have to, as I explained the process, you have to pay for really good Amarone. But I was told in the shop that this is actually a really nice step into Amarone. You are getting typical Amarone flavours. You just won't get quite the power. Okay, so I... I already drank it. <laughs> I couldn't wait. We had some dinner yesterday with kind of a beef stew, which is quite perfect. So I already drank a lot. And I can tell you, actually, this wine is, yeah, it's not going to knock your socks off. But for anyone who, who hasn't tried Amarone before and wants something in a slightly more affordable fashion, this is a great one to have. Um, now, just to reacquaint myself with this, have a look. Much, much darker. Amarone is always going to be concentrated and powerful and generally 15 to 16%, so watch out for that. Um, do not let that put you off. Well-made Amarone is about balance, so it might have lots of alcohol, but it shouldn't necessarily taste like lots of alcohol if it's well-made, okay? So on the nose straight away, um, it's not, this is uh, not a uh, completely fully pronounced nose, you have to give it a bit of a sniff, but I know from my evidence earlier, actually if you decant this wine, which a lot of wine that's been in bottle for a while, really benefits from so pour it in you don't need a fancy decanter you could even just put it in a, a you know a glass water jug it, the idea is just to get some air into it it's also why we kind of swill the the wine around the glass it does change a little bit and you get more flavors out of it but i'm getting that typical black fruit black cherries and as i said dried raisins more with this wine when i've been searching for it it's a bit more dried prunes, actually, but you can really t um, smell those flavours. It's a little bit of bitter chocolate. Amarone means big bitter. Uh, so that is exactly what we're expecting. But what happens on the palate is much sweeter. This is big, it's round. Obviously, if I was paying a little bit more money, 
I probably get the big, heavy, weighty, luscious amarone. This still actually has a freshness, but it's really very, very enjoyable. I get a lot of that Christmas spice, a bit of nutmeg, um, lots of cloves. And of course, because of those dried raisins and, and dried prunes, you can imagine kind of a Christmas cake. Um, it's juicy, um, lots of power in there, but what's quite nice in general, the grapes that I mentioned already, don't have too much tannin. And certainly with this, you don't get as much tannin. So you get a lovely freshness, loads of that concentration of chocolate and dried fruits and black cherries and everything. Um, but it's not too drying on the gums. So there's a bit of a lusciousness effectively. And that's what Amarone is. Um, so this is a really good one to try to bring you into the world of Amarone. If you are having an Amarone, uh, what to pair it with? Um, think of, again, rich flavours, uh, gamey notes, um, veal, oxtail, um, all these kind of strong meats, of course a steak, but also really rich pastas can be great, you know, like a wild boar ragu, or in fact, uh, what's quite popular, I found when I go to Italy, um, gorgonzola, which is perfect with Amarone, um, gorgonzola and walnuts. So that again pairs with this nuttiness that's in the wine. In fact, now, imagine, you know, those um, Cadbury's fruit and nut bars. There's a little bit of that going on in my mouth. So, yeah, really wonderful. This has sweet flavours, but it's a dry wine. This is one of the higher alcohol wines in the world. It's like if you like port, port flavours, uh, but without the sweetness, you're going to get that in an Amarone. And of course, remember, if you're pairing the Val Policella, it's light, it's fresh, it's juicy, much more red fruit. You can have that with antipasties, with salamis, with even just poultry, um, uh, even pizza. It's a light everyday drinking wine. The lighter, fresher it is, you can chill it down and have it outside on a lovely summer's day and it will be perfect. So that gives you a little bit of an idea, hopefully, in very short form of Amarone versus Val Policella. If you have any questions, give me a shout. Please, more suggestions. What grapes do you want me to do? What do you want me to teach you about or, or have a little chat about? Let me know, like, subscribe, share, all the usual. Thank you so much for joining me again and you'll see me again next week. Cheers. Thanks very much.